everybody. Welcome to another week of my choice. Um, so for this week, I wanted to do a little throwback to Sinkfold Cup 2019. Um, one of my favorite games between Sovesli and Fabiano Carana. It was a really interesting game and I thought it would be a good choice to show that and just review something like that. All right, let's dive in. So um, this game, they started with C4 English opening and uh, E5. Well, this is a very interesting uh, choice because I also play E5 and it was really interesting for me to see something like that. And all right, G3, Knight F6. Yeah, so there are other lines that in um, probably lower levels sh could be played something like the reverse Sicilian um, whoops, with knight c6 and then you could try to do some ideas with like f5 g6 and fianche to the bishop stuff like that um, I think those are good ideas to play in like a um, blitz game or f uh, between uh, lower rated players or when you're facing uh, a weaker opponent and you just want to uh, outplay them out of the opening so but so and fabi are uh, pretty close in uh, level <laughs> so it wouldn't have probably been the best idea so after knight of six uh, bishop g2 seems like the logical move i think knight c3 is also a um, pretty good move but anyways so the theoretically d5 is uh the main line that I know of and after take take if knight c3 there is this knight b6 and the idea is that you want to play knight out bishop here castle and uh, try to do something like bishop e6 and you're controlling so many squares and your pieces are like all together and um, I like that just because strategically it's a very nice position but Fabiano had uh, a pretty deep prep from what I remember and so this he played c6 after bishop g2 c6 uh, all right I think it's good idea to take a little bit of time or pause the this video and think about where should white's pieces be because white could try to do something like e3 and bring the knight from e2 could do d3, bring out bishop, and then bring out the knight from d2, c3, just um, so you, you get a good idea of where the pieces are supposed to be. All right, so in the game, uh, Sovesli played knight f3. Um, knight f3, first glance, what is the first move you think about? For me, the first move that I think about is something like e4, because with e4, you're attacking the knight, now knight has to move, and knight doesn't really have a, a very stable place to go. That's why maybe um, d3 would have been slightly more steady, but I don't really know what was uh, Sylvester's preparation, so I can't speak for him. After knight of 3 e4 is what happened in the game as well and now knight comes to d4 now immediately after knight d4 the moves that you could think of are you either could think about bringing the queen out you could think about bringing the bishop out and the idea is that you want to attack this weak pawn and you want to have this diagonal all um, packed up and ready for attack um, bishop c5 could be faced with knight b3 and then you wouldn't really know what to do with the bishop if you come back there's always c5 and also your queen where do you want to place the queen so uh, queen b6 was played in the game which I do think was a very smart choice uh, here mm, white played knight b3 now um, do you think e3 should be a candidate move to think about I think that the answer is yes because uh, the knight here is pretty strong and even if bishop c5 now the knight could just go back to e2 or b3 and keep attacking this bishop also 
e3 would kind of blind this diagonal for white for black um, however it does open up some weaknesses here but black is nowhere near ready to try and uh, maneuver on them so white played knight b3 the idea is pretty much to control this square so bishop c5 won't be happening right now so take another few seconds and think how can you come up with a plan that you would want to play this bishop c5 how can you um, distract or make this knight move away kind of gave it up though anyways so the idea is that you would follow up with a5 and after a5 you your idea is simple you want to push a4 and you want to trap the knight so the next move that white does should be something uh, about opening up squares for the knight in the game d3 was played which i do think was pretty much the only lo logical move because something like a4 it's this is like such a nice outpost i feel like knight a6 knight b4 would have been played pretty immediately um so d3 now we get to play our a4 knight goes to d2 and after knight goes to d2 you see a new um idea with e3 I'm not entirely sure if e3 works immediately because even if simply take take the knight could start jumping around and um, the bishop would be coming out it would be so much nicer if you could after e3 f e3 take with bishop right so play bishop c5 your idea is to um, control this square now you want to play e3 oops sorry um, also, d5 was a move that uh, Fabiano had played previously in another game. So probably, uh, so Leslie was prepared for this line. Mm, just maybe not his um, first choice that would be happening in that game. Anyways, after knight d2, bishop c5. Um, what do you think should happen? Well, I think some of the candidate moves to make is castle you completely ignore the e3 idea or you play something like e3 and you face it um, immediately you block this uh, idea you block this diagonal you block the e3 idea from black side those are the two moves that um, you should be calculating let's look at e3 first the move that uh, e after e3 uh, white should be calculating is take now castle probably and uh, this is a game that was actually played 2018 um, between these gentlemen yeah uh, also in um, after e3 instead of for example short castle knight c3 was also played by um, mayor versus Bucklon in bill 2016 and they followed it up with queen a6 uh, b3 a3 and they, that game also ended in a draw so uh, in this game castle was played which at the time was a novelty and after castle now black gets to play e3 so now do you think this castle was like a bluff to invite for e3 or was it more like mm, calculated and um, so basically what what would you do as black would you go for e3 or not well in the game they did go for e3 and after e3 f takes e3 bishop takes e3 king h1 now what's the what are the squares that you would want to um, dominate well I think first of all this this is such a nice hole to try and jump into so I guess knight g4 should be the first move to consider for black um, 
And that is also what they did in the game. They followed up with knight g4, and white only has one move. What do you think that move is? Take two seconds to figure that out. Yep, it should be knight e4. Whoops, should be knight e4. Because if something like queen e1, now you just get knight f2, and uh, well, you lose a um, exchange least of all. So, knight e4 is the only move. Now, um, this knight on e4 is protecting f2 and is also threatening something like check, which would also be attacking this guy and this guy, and you wouldn't really want that for yourself as black. So you have two choices. You can either think about d5 and um, kind of call this knight e4's bluff, or if knight e4 is really a good move, then you should castle and try to prepare for f5 or d5. What do you think you should do? Well, if you would play d5, then knight d6, where would you place your king? Because if king comes to f8, rook f7 is coming up. If king goes to d8, knight takes f7 is coming up. If you go to bishop, uh, sorry, king d7, now um, another move that's coming up and it's quite unpleasant is bishop h3. Uh, these are the little moves that might be a little hard to think about because your, your game is happening here. Why would you um, move it all the way from a different side? Uh, but this knight is threatening to come over here. If you take rook, he takes f7, king takes d6, and you're out of checks. If you would play knight takes f7, knight f2 is very strong. Um, so you have to do something as white. And bishop h3 seems to be pretty strong. Because if something like f5, then um, knight takes f5. If something... Um, and... Yeah, this seems to be the way to go. Um, I'm pretty sure knight f7 is also strong enough. Bishop h3 might not be your first choice, and if you don't see it, that's okay. But bishop h3 is a move worth considering, because um, your bishop would be trying to handle this strong knight, at least pin it. So if bishop h3 is something like h5, now there's knight f7. I also do think something like knight c8 is good enough because now if king c8 there should be bishop h3 and again the same idea of pinning even if rook takes c8 again here and if knight f2 simply take and the que uh, black's queen is under attack. So yeah d5 is not a very good move, in fact I'm pretty sure it's a bad move. <laughs> so after knight e4 you got a castle. You got to save your king, and now you want to come up with ideas with d5 and f5 and stuff like that. So, what do you think white should do? Keep in mind that these bishops are facing each other, and could be um, that should that could be an idea, but you can't take it right now because of knight e3, and you would get forked. So. The move that they played in the game was knight simply developing the knight. And I think this is a very um, smooth move because it also controls this d5 idea. So you can't play d5 that easily because if d5, simply take. Now, that's just something to consider. Um, so we were talking about d5 or f5. Now the question is, do you want to play d5 or f5? How can you... Um, how can you start calculating about it? Try to find if something is wrong with f5, because with f5 you are not really sacrificing a pawn, whereas with d5 it's take, take, and then the knight could take, and you would be sacrificing a pawn. So it would make much more sense if f5 was actually good enough. The problem with f5 is, um, even though it's directly attacking the knight and why it's not going to move the knight, White could also attack your knight with a move such as h3. If you take on e4, take rook, take back, h takes g4, and you see black's pieces are not really ready to come out. 
this it's gonna take so many moves for the bishop to come out for the knight to come out for the rook to come out while these are getting exchanged pretty you know, next few moves and white pieces are more ready to come out this e4 pawn is a weakness so as soon as you see f5 h3 and you uh, go after up until the end of that move 16 end of that line um, you should be able to make the decision that f5 shouldn't really be your move so now start thinking about d5 d5 well white kind of has to take because if now h3 now you can take and if take now the bishop is open bishop could take the pawn or i'm pretty sure um, you could even try and um, just simply win a pawn by something like this you just want a pawn and you just you'll just follow up you'll just continue your you'll try to bring your knight out you can play simply you don't need to go um, make crazy tactics those might come out later so after c takes d5 um, what do you think black should do because if you take back well I'm not gonna give it out that easy first of all think about what your candidate moves should be um, to make candidate moves think about checks first do you see any viable checks the only check that I see is knight f2, but that's not really um, the way you would want to go because knight takes f2, bishop takes f2, and you don't really have anything. The other candidate move to, to try and make is um, exchange or takes. You could think about this take, you could think about this take if it works, you could think about this take, and those are the only takes that are, well, queen b2 is also a take, but you should be able to um, eliminate that pretty fast so in order to make so th these candid moves knight h2 also doesn't work ideally if you could give a check right after knight h2 okay that that will work but in this situation it doesn't so um, the moves to think about are bishop takes the bishop or you just take your pawn back um, those are the two moves that you should start calculating on and uh, let's take a look at take back if take back now your queen and your bishop are being attacked so it's about time to move the queen to the other side of the board you're also attacking mate and if h4 um i don't really see an easy way for black to improve the position and also these two knights on the center are really really strong this um, bishop is under attack you can't really exchange it up because just queen ex uh, queen takes back and uh, offering ex exchange queens and white is just a pawn up and better development and even though the king might look weak you can't really attack it um, right now so as soon as you see that your attack is kind of dead you should consider bishop takes c1 after bishop takes c1 rook c1 is a blunder because of knight e3 so you could think about queen c1 now what would you want to do after queen c1 do you want to take the pawn back or would you want to play something like uh, an intermediate ish move with knight e3 attacking the rook attacking the bishop maybe you want to take your pawn back whoops that is not a move um so knight e3 is the right way to go because after rook comes to f3 you see rook f3 is pretty much the best move because if something like rook f4 or rook f2 or anything with the rook that's not attacking the knight you could just take back this pawn with the pawn attack the e4 knight let's say let's oh my god all right let's just say um rook f4 you could easily take back your pawn attack the knight now knight has to go some way um, where do you want to go? D2, F2, let's go to D2. Now you could even think about bringing out the other knight or you could try think about pushing and making a stronger outpost here. So you see, you, black's position starts a nice flow. So that's why rook F3 should be the only move. Now, um, try to think a little bit about whether or not you want to take the bishop or you want to take the pawn with your knight. Okay, 
Let's talk about taking back the pawn with the knight. You see, if you take that, white's position is kind of ready to burst with something like queen g5, and you don't really have enough pieces to come to help your king or to cover it up or to try and participate in the attack. Whereas white's next few moves could be to take on d5, give knight f6 check, bring the other rook to f1. White has a nice flow. So queen g5 and um, it's quite unpleasant. Now, so you, as soon as you see queen g5 and you see that the attack is coming your way and you can't really um, close it up, you can think about knight g2. It's about time. King takes g2. Now, you see that that queen g5 attack is still coming up. So think about a move that would um, kind of block off or control the, the queen on g5. That move is queen d8. You're controlling your weak squares of knight on f6 or queen coming to g5. You can't really play something like h6 because knight f6 is, is a still possible, is a viable threat. And also another way to think about it is your queen is not doing anything here. Your queen's job is done. You need the queen to come back to this side of the board. So bring the queen home. Now, if white were to take on your um, d6, uh, d takes c6 pawn, you could simply take back with the knight. And this kind of helps your development. Even though white is up a pawn, this is kind of um, uh, better, slightly better compared to what happened in the game for you. Now if queen g5 and wants to trade off the queens, simply bring in your knight. Take, take, you have to move the rook. Now the knight could try to jump a little farther or um, could, could try to create some weaknesses over here, could try to do some b5, b4. You see, black, black gets some possibilities. But after queen d8, queen g5 is the best move to play. Um, especially because, well, you know the simple rule that when you're up material, it's a good idea to trade off your heavy pieces? Here's that. And also, um, white can kind of has only a few choices because um, if it was black to move again, black would take this guy. So white has to either take this or come up with a way to protect this pawn here. So queen g5. Would you want to take the queen? Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be very inclined to do so because knight takes g5 and black is simply a pawn down in the end game. I mean, black could try to d jump some stuff around and um, see how it goes, but I I wouldn't be very comfortable playing this as black. So, um, in the game, black actually continued. Uh, black continued um, with f6 rejecting queen exchange. Now, do you think it's a good idea? Do you think white can um, take f6 simply? I believe so. I think, it, I think all the pieces are there. Okay, so you want to take on f6. With what? Do you want to take with rook? you want to take with knight? That would be say, super, right? Yeah, so it's that, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too so. Yeah, maybe uh, not right now, not, not capture right now. Okay, um, why? why? What are you afraid of? Let's say knight takes, rook takes. I think so. I think that's actually, um, I don't really see the difference between bringing the rook first or the knight 
to the attack first, but yeah. those are the moves that should be coming up. Um, in the game, they followed it up with knight comes to e4 first, and how would you try to defend the rook with, with black pieces? Um, rook f8 should be one of your candidate moves, but oh, oops, what do you think happens after rook f8? If white were to exchange the queens, you would simply be a piece up, so awesome. But what were you, what would you do if you were white? I would have to play rook f1, rook f1. Yeah, good job. I can't, now black can't exchange the queen because of mate. So, what should black do now? I guess Probably I have to ask what could black do? Probably take h6. But the problem is even h6 rook takes. Uh, 97, or, I mean... Or, or rook takes first, so rook takes f3. Oh, your queen is hanging. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, rook f8 is actually um, not not good, it loses. Because of rook f1. And if take, now you want to play something like knight out? Uh, right. um, yeah, I mean, you have to be yeah, but you're still two pound pounds down. So, I mean, worst case scenario, yeah. white could just exchange everything off yeah. and just take this pawn, and white's two pawns up. Easy win. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. After knight e4, rook f8 doesn't work, but rook f8 is the move that you should calculate and see why it doesn't work. And as soon as you see that, you realize that, all right, my rook is pinned, make peace with the rook going bye-bye, and try to make the best of it. How? With knight d7. Now, if something like knight takes f6, you just take back, and it's actually a pretty um, happy position. If rook comes to f1, um, I think this is what actually happened in the game. You can just play king h8. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the game because after rook f1, so knight e4, knight comes to d7, and rook f1. What about rook d6? Here? Yeah. Uh, no, no. So before, if, yeah. Rook I think the same idea applies. Still coming up for the mate. And now your rook is also under attack. Yeah. Yeah, no way to okay. save the rook. A good question. Cool. So knight comes to d7, rook goes to f1. Now, as black, what are the moves that you should be considering? Because, let's face it, this rook is falling. I think h6 is uh, should be at least one of your candidate moves. Okay, so, so what's the thing, what is the problem with your position? What's the big problem with your position? Besides the fact that you didn't have time to develop.
Okay. Uh, also, this this pawn is pinned, right? Yeah. So unpin it. Move the king. Yeah. See, if king f8, uh, your king is a little still in, in the middle of the board, so... Um, you also mentioned h6. Uh, h6 is also um, kind of same stuff. Knight takes check. Now if you take with the knight, there is a queen, f queen g6 that is still attacking your knight with the rook. And the pawn is still pinned. You can't really move it because of rook takes f6. So... It makes more sense to get rid of the pin, right? All right. So, after king h8, knight f6 uh, for white seems like the, the move to, to do, right? Because if not knight f6, then um, what is white really trying to push for? Now, if knight, after knight takes f6, um, knight f6 is the best move. Gf6. Um, I think something like queen h6 kind of um, scares me. The, the problem is, I don't think the problem is the, the fact that it scares me. The problem is it scares me because how are you going to try to bring out this knight, this bishop, this rook? Whereas when you would take with the knight, now your bishop is going to try and take some breath. Your rook could come out. You know, you try to create more chances for yourself as black. So knight take, knight take back. Now as white, something like rook f6 doesn't work anymore because just gf6 and if you do rook f6 again, um, you don't really have a threat. You don't really have mate, your rook is pinned. You don't really have any um, checks to take my queen. And also this seems like a reasonable exchange, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why rook f6 doesn't work. Now, rook f6 doesn't work mainly because of this queen d5. So the way you should think about it in the game is you want to do rook f6, but e4 doesn't, um, but your d5 pawn is weak. I gave up the move. <laughs> so you have to play e4 to defend this pawn. Now you want to go with bishop rook takes f6. Um, black really needs to try and bring out some pieces. In the game they played bishop d7. I don't really see anything else, any like other way to try and develop. So let's go with that. The other problem is something like e5 is coming up. And now your knight is pinned. Whoops. If, um, if it were white to move again, something like e5 is happening. Your knight on f6 is pinned um, to, because of the defenseless d8 queen. Oh my god. So now you have to play something like you have to move your bishop to defend your queen with the rook. So bishop d7 is pretty much the only logical move to do. <laughs> After bishop d7, um, now try to make candidate moves because as white, um, you do have a good position. Uh, it's not really winning or super advantage or anything. You just have more space and the more pressure on your opponent. So try to think of different ways uh, that how it would ha go, how, what should you do. Um, be careful. Remember how earlier you said that your back rank is weak if you yeah. if you move the knight? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is that is a weakness. So the back rank is weak. It is white white to move though. So try to as white one of your ideas could be to play something like e5, right? To attack the knight. Now if knight moves or takes, 
Now the queen um, would get exchanged. These pawns are monster. See if knight d5 mate. Right? All right, so e5 should be one move to think about, right? Okay, what else? What is another candidate move? Um, the problem is some playing, uh, I mean, after e5, the problem is if you play something like knight g8, take, take, rook f8, take, take, and you're still stuck, e5, e6 is coming up, you could try to take, or, um, even here, you could try to play e6 first or d6 first and then go for rook f8. Like e6, where do you put your bishop? Or it's like, yeah. So uh, the position is not really, um, if, you, if you have to play something like knight g8, you're lost. But uh, before diving too deep into e5, mm, let's think about other candidate moves for white. All right, hint. Think about takes first. Okay, so I'm assuming c takes, c takes b. Okay, that's actually, yeah, that's uh, something that you could consider. Doesn't really help your position, and you have a pretty good center. So what else? Well, wipes out. That should be one of your candidate moves, too. And the other one is um, not very easy to see, so I'm just going to say it. d6 could also be one of your candidate moves as white, mainly because it just adds pressure simply. And now it's asking, okay, what do you want to do? If it was white to move again, white would go for the move e5. Whoops. All right. So let's think about the first move we talked about, e5 first. So far, we haven't found anything for black. Like, you touch the knight, you lose, pretty much, right? So, don't touch the knight. Think about the intermediate moves. You're attacking my knight, I'm, I'm going to attack something bigger. Yeah, perfect. That is actually a pretty strong move. See, the problem is if the queen goes away, you just take the pawn. Rook f8 doesn't really work anymore. You're not going to get mated. The queen goes away, still take the, the pawn. Good enough? Because if now the queens get exchanged, um, it's one rook and one pawn to these two pieces. And um, even though white might seem a little bit too act more active, uh, white actually doesn't have any advantage and it would be black who would try to push for more. Like give black two, three moves to bring out the king, activate the bishop, defend this pawn and black would be very strong. Two pieces are usually stronger than a rook and a pawn. All right, so that's what is going on with e5. Now, after understanding why e5 is not good because of h6 and losing d5 pawn, 
That is why you, you would think about a move such as d6. So you would see e5 first, and when you see h6, and then you see the line with knight takes d5, you would realize that, all right, so my d5 is hanging. So let's play d6 first, keep the, the pawn there, add more pressure, mm, get gain more space, all those fun stuff, and now you actually want to play e5. Because now, if, let's say, it if it were... Um, White to move again, white could do e5, h a if h6, queen goes away, if you play knight e5, now this position is actually um, pretty risky, just because I could simply try and attack here, or I could try and push for e6, like rook f7, where do you place your bishop? If you move the bishop, I just play d7, trying to make queen, yeah. yeah. So. That's why d6 is the move to think about. Now, um, this is also pretty hard, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of time to absorb the position. Um, but the problem, the tiny problem <laughs> with d6 is that uh, now wh black wouldn't want to exchange the queens off, right? So black should move the queen somewhere else. That should be the first thing that comes across your mind after understanding the threat of e5 and going to that end game and knowing that that's losing for black. You could start thinking about, all right, so where do you want the queen to go? Now, ideally, you would want to try and centralize your queen. How would you do that? Something like queen g8. It looks pretty um, unorthodox but it's actually a very strong move because now if e5 we could do queen d5 and now this queen is uh, pinning this pawn and pinning the rook and it's it's just it's a magical queen <laughs> uh, because if you if white would play something like queen f4 you could simply move your knight away see this queen f8 wouldn't work anymore because the rook is pinned, right? And you can't take it back, it's pinned. So, um, let's say you would play something like queen e4, and if the queens were exchanged off, just king g8, you protect the weak square, you are attacking this guy, and no way to protect it. So, uh, life gets pretty easier as black. And another thing to consider is this h3. Because after h3, what would you do? You can't, like, you can't take this um, knight because of queen takes and then checkmate. So what else would you do after h3? Keep thinking about how in pretty much all over the game, when a piece was attacked, um, black came up with some intermediate move to attack the bigger guy. G5. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? But it's what the position needs, simply, because you can't take the pawn, but you really want to get rid of this pawn. So in order to do that, G5. Take, take, and I would assume that they would um, go for check, check, check and call it a day, which would be a smart decision because, well, then the rook is hanging, so least of all. So we looked at the lines e5 and we realized because of h6 it doesn't work. We looked at the line d6 and then we saw this tricky queen comes to g8 and then jumps to d5 and centralizes and all those crazy stuff. Now, after thinking about that, you realize that as white, this e5, d6 idea wouldn't work. So you start thinking about rook takes f6. g takes f6, the other rook takes f6. Now, you still have a pretty good center. Like, if you had two moves, this pawn would come here. It's such a monster. Now, as black, the other problem is as white, would want, you would want to play like queen e5 and start going for the jugular. Now. 
as black, as soon as you realize this is, th this is what's happening, you should stop it. How? It would really help if every move that your opponent does, when it's your move, you think, all right, what does white want? What does, my, what does my opponent want? If it was his move again, what would you do? Yep. White wants to play queen e5. So stop it. Yep, that's one move. Give me another one too. Uh, give up the bishop? Oh no no. <laughs> don't don't it's okay. We like our bishop. So queen e eight is uh, one move, but queen e seven is the more stable move, I wanna say. Because it, your rook is also coming in the game. Yeah. So after queen e seven, queen e five doesn't work anymore. How would you come up with a new plan as white? What would be that new plan? Uh, I would say possibly I'm thinking queen g4. Uh, oh, queen f4, sorry. Uh huh. Queen f4. Now your idea is to jump the rook in, right? Yeah. Okay, so whoops. Pretty much your idea is that you don't like this queen here because you want to place your queen here and you want this queen to move. Yeah. That's the gist of it, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty good. Queen f4. Now I have black understands that this rook f7 is coming up. So it's a good idea to take that away. How? The other way to think about it is this queen e5 here would be very annoying to your king. So your king could possibly... Yes, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, you're simply protecting f7 square and if this queen e5 happens, it doesn't serve as um, horrifying purpose. Yeah. All right, so after king g8, white's plans are all kind of ruined. Uh, white could play queen g5, but queen g7 and, I mean, something like queen e5, it doesn't make much sense anymore. You just bring in your rook. Even rook f8 should be good enough. Anyways, so, um, you still would want this queen to move away, so, e5. Sorry, d6. Now, the queen can't really go back because of um, check on g5, and s those are pretty scary, so... Queen g7, protecting your king. Now, mm, white realizes that like, these, this rook is good here, the queen is good here, and let's try to keep pushing pawns, right? And also some ideas with checks, probably. So, if it was white to move again, white wants to play e6. So, your job as black is to stop that. Simple moves. Develop. Um, I think queen g4, even if take, take e6, that's uh, still pretty scary. Or like queen g4, maybe um, simply queen goes... Maybe take, take e6 is... This is really scary. I, I, I mean, yeah. I don't think it's like losing scary but you would have to be very precise as scary yeah that's actually the way to go you're protecting this square for the moment so e6 ain't gonna happen 
and if white tries to do some uh, interesting stuff like check you just move the king away e6 still doesn't work because the f6 rook is hanging now if for example white gets to do the rook f7 that's been waiting for what can you do now what's different Think about what's weak in white's position now. So you could think about this move. What do you, what do you think? Uh, what were you afraid of to thinking about this move? Rook d7? And now, well, black kind of has a perpetual, and considering black was under pressure for most of the middle game, I think it's a pretty um, good result. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if king g4, there should also be this rook coming up, so just king h3 and shake hands. Yeah, I mean, not every crazy game has to end in a, in a um, win or loss. So it's... it's uh, no, well, I mean, this this is black being decisive because black's position is under pressure. What else can black do? Maybe if here white tried to do something like d4, I still don't think it's worth that pressure. Um, but maybe this is something that white could try to think about because now rook f7. But even if, even if it, whoops. Even if it was um, white to move and rook f7, still queen g4, everything is defended. I mean, it still keeps the game in the middle game, but I... This bishop becomes pretty strong, coming up with some ideas. Yeah, I, um, I kind of agree with the, the way both white and black went about it for the last few moves, because they both found the best moves um, pretty much all throughout the game. So there is nothing with uh, the, the, the result of draw when you and your opponent all play the best moves. It's like, I mean, you deserve it, your opponent deserves it. That's the way I think about it. If you if you can find all the best moves and you can f I can find all the best moves well. But yeah, this was a very interesting game. I 
I thought this was pretty cool. It was also a nice throwback. Yeah, both, both sides uh, being resourceful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, this is all I had for this week's My Choice. And hope you enjoyed it. It was, I think it was pretty cool. And thank you. See you next time.